Now we're going to figure out how to uh, get the main thread to to wait around and, and stop uh, stop uh, finishing before uh, before our ten threads are finished because you, you can see uh, it'll print out maybe like four or so before it uh, reaches the end. Sometimes two, sometimes none, and uh, that's not what we want. So uh, let's uh, for a clue. Uh, let's look at this uh, this thread or this uh, this met, uh, this function again, uh, which is. Uh, now, standard thread spawn so that's uh, that's what this is uh, where we have the closure and uh, yeah that join handle thing again so let's uh, let's look at join handle and a join handle is let's see a join handle detaches blah 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 is not possible to clone um actually let's uh, let's just see what happens when we just create a join handle let's say let handle equals standard thread spawn because it creates join handle. So let's do that and see if it changes anything. And you can see it doesn't do anything yet. So let's look at join handle again. Uh, the important thing is uh, right here. So it's the, um, it's just a regular method, super, super normal. You, you write the, um, you know, dot join. And what it does is it waits for the associated thread to finish. So that is uh, exactly what, uh, what we want. You take the, the join handle is created and then it calls this and it, it makes it wait basically. So let's do that. So we have this um, this handle here, handle.join, and let's uh, let's try it out and hopefully it'll work. And you can see it does work. So now it is uh, so it's creating the join handle and we call it so you know, join effectively means stop. And you know it it says just a variable so we can call it whatever we want, we can call it stopper, then we can say stopper.join. So that is the uh, that is the way you get uh, all your threads to uh, to run. And uh, we can uh, we can have some more fun here by doing uh, let's see. Let's call this let's stopper stopper two. And then down here we can have stopper.join and then stopper two dot join. And so we have, um, let's see. So from zero to 10, we're going to make this thread, make another thread, and uh, at, only at the very end, we're going to uh, call join and make them stop, not joint, join. And then um, you can you can kind of uh, get an, an idea again, actually, I'm printing one, I'm printing two. I have to make it different so we can see uh, see what's going on. So there you go. You can see it's in all sorts of, uh, you know, some. It's basically random order. Whichever one gets to it first uh, uh, will will print. You got two, one, two, one, two, one, one, two, two, and so on. And so we are, um, you know, they're they're going uh, they're going back and forth doing their thing, and then uh, and then join will get them to um, to uh, let's see. To, it'll make the the main thread you know wait for for uh, to get past this and this point before uh, before finishing. So anyway, join is how you do it. Uh, so let's uh, get rid of this. Let's go back to this simpler stopper dot join. And uh, so let's try to for i. So let's say we want to uh, we want to print this number. So uh, let's say for i in zero to ten. And then we're going to make this thread and then try to print it and see what happens. And uh, I am printing I. Try that again. And you can see it's not going to let us do that. So it says closure may outlive the current function, but it borrows I, which is owned by the current function. So the uh, the Rust's problem with this is that we have uh, <clears throat> we have i here, and uh, it, it's being it's being borrowed. Uh, it has to it it might not live long enough, um, and uh, it's it's a closure and uh, a closure. You know it. Uh, we saw this once. So there's a fn, there's a fn mute, and fn once, and a closure is going to take the least uh, restrictive type it can. So here it's uh, what it's trying to do is uh, it's trying to be an fn which uh, takes a reference. 
because it doesn't want to take a mutable reference if it, if it doesn't have to. Uh, it doesn't want to take a, a um, let's see, takes a takes ownership. So, you know, it doesn't want to take uh, outright ownership because uh, a closure wants to be, uh, you know, as flexible as possible and just take, uh, take a reference if it can. Uh, if you tell it to, uh, to change something, then it's going to say, okay, I need to be, uh, I need to be an FN mute closure. And if you, uh, if you, if you want to take ownership, if you, uh, if you use like a, a function that, that requires ownership, then it's going to say, okay, I'll be an FN once closure, closure, and I will take, uh, actually take the value. And here, what it's trying to do is it's trying to take a reference when, uh, what you need to do is, uh, make it take ownership because you want to, uh, you know, bring this, bring this number into the thread and then, uh, then it's, you know, safely enclosed instead of, you know, being connected to, uh, to the outside at the same time when, when one might not live, uh, as long as the other and you have, uh, you know, various data related problems there. So, uh, let's look at the, uh, the, the compiler message again, because it actually, you know, after all this, it, uh, it tells you what to do because this is, you know, it's a lot of information. Closure may outlive the current function, may outlive borrowed value i, i is borrowed here, you know, and if you're not used to seeing this, it's not very helpful. But this, this is the helpful part. So help to force the closure to take ownership of i, use the move keyword. And this is what you see in, um, in con concurrency all the time in Rust because, um, because of how function uh, closures work, they they don't want to take ownership if uh, if they don't have to. So what you do is you use this this keyword move before the uh, the closure bars, and that's saying you need to take ownership. Uh, I'm forcing you to be an fn once uh, closure. So you you're taking this, you're taking it into the thread, and now it's safe to you know do your thing. You can print it, and it. Uh, and there are no problems here. And also it's, uh, you know, this is a copy type. So, uh, so it's, uh, there's no problem there either. Um, in other circumstances, you would need to, you know, clone, you would clone something and put it into the thread if it's like a string. But uh, here we are just, uh, we're just taking it into the thread and telling Rust to, uh, telling the closure to move it in outright. And then, uh, then there's no problem. So you can see it, uh, so it moves it in. It's uh, it's happy with that. It prints the number, and uh, now it's uh, you know exactly what we want it to see. So that is uh, you know we've just barely scratched the surface of uh, of con concurrency, but the uh, the move keyword is definitely something you want to get used to. And just remember that it's before the bars, and uh, and then you know you you make your closure here, and then you just. Uh, you know, open, open, close brackets and, uh, do whatever you want to do. And don't forget to, uh, declare the, uh, a name for the join handle so that you can call join on it and, uh, and keep the main function from uh, ending before, uh, before you want it to.